Homo erectus was one of the most successful human species of all time, controlling large portions of the world for almost two million years and setting the blueprint that modern humans would eventually adopt with their megafaunal predation, use of fire, and wide variety of survival practices. They were a serious jump from previous Australopithecines and were the first human species to leave Africa. Living between approximately 1.89 million and 110,000 years ago, Homo erectus was found across various regions, including vast swaths of Africa, as well as parts of Asia and Indonesia. Homo erectus was much larger than earlier hominins, with adult individuals standing 4 foot 9 to 6 foot 1 and weighing between 88 to 150 pounds. Homo erectus was more modern compared to earlier hominids, having proportionally longer legs and shorter arms, showing further adaptation for bipedal locomotion and a fully terrestrial lifestyle. These adaptations would have allowed efficient walking and running over long distances. Homo erectus was also recognized for having a more flat face, a prominent nose, and possibly sparse body hair coverage. Their brain size varied quite a bit, as small as 500 cubic centimeters to as large as 1,250, almost as large as modern humans. The energy demands of their tall bodies and larger brains were met by consuming meat and other high-calorie foods, which could be quickly digested. It's speculated that honey and underground tubers may have been significant food sources for them, as well as, obviously, megafauna. The archaeological record shows that around 1.76 million years ago, they began crafting Akulian stone tools, including hand axes and cleavers, indicating a broader reliance on tools for survival. Furthermore, the earliest evidence of fires occurs during the Homo erectus era, suggesting that they utilized fire for cooking, warmth, social interaction, and protection from large predators. And they are also considered to be the first human species to have expanded beyond Africa. Homo erectus in many ways set the blueprint for the lifestyle modern humans would eventually adopt. They were incredibly successful in their day, but could they be as successful in the age of reptiles? The Triassic period spanned from around 252 to 201 million years ago, Born from the end Permian mass extinction, it was an alien world. The environmental and ecological conditions during the Triassic were drastically different from those experienced by Homo erectus in their time. The climate was generally hot and dry, and the flora and fauna were quite different, with the dominant terrestrial vertebrates being early dinosaurs, reptiles, and amphibians, while mammal-like synapsids were just beginning to evolve. The survival of Homo erectus was closely tied to their ability to utilize tools, control fire, and harness a variety of food sources, including meat, which required a certain level of prey animals and edible vegetation existing within their environment. The Triassic, with its ancient and drastically different ecosystems, would likely not have provided the necessary resources and conditions conducive for Homo erectus survival. Moreover, the atmospheric oxygen levels and other environmental factors during the Triassic period could have posed insurmountable challenges to Homo erectus, whose physiology was adapted to conditions millions of years later. The oxygen levels were so low, in fact, that fire could not burn, and of course any mammal as large as Homo erectus would not be able to oxygenate itself. Also, the predatory and competitive pressures from the creatures of the Triassic, many of which were significantly larger and more formidable than Homo erectus, would have posed serious challenges. The anachronistic placement of Homo erectus into the Triassic period highlights a myriad of survival challenges rooted in drastic environmental, ecological, and evolutionary disparities between the two time periods, making it essentially impossible for Homo erectus to survive in this time period. The Jurassic is often called the heyday of dinosaurs. And while this is not very accurate, and in truth the Cretaceous was the peak in terms of diversity and size, the Jurassic did have a host of intimidating and capable predators, as well as indomitable herbivorous giants. The survival of Homo erectus in the Jurassic is possible, but far from assured, their survival would hinge on numerous environmental and biological factors. While the Jurassic had generally higher oxygen levels than the Triassic, and had short periods where oxygen levels were comparable to or above modern levels, the majority of the Jurassic showcased lower oxygen levels, which would challenge the respiratory systems of Homo erectus. However, the myriad of challenges posed by the Jurassic environment extend far beyond oxygen availability. 
The hostile environment of the Jurassic contained hordes of hostile predators and unfamiliar flora and fauna. These would present serious challenges. While Homo erectus were known to be proficient hunters and gatherers with a broad diet in their own time, the organisms they relied on for sustenance did not exist in the Jurassic. They were very capable of hunting megafauna. In their time, proboscideans, rhinos, equids, bovines, and others were often taken as prey. And these same strategies, using ranged projectiles and group tactics, could be effective on the megafauna of the Jurassic. However, since many of the sauropods exceeded 60 tons and one reached 100 tons, it would be incredibly difficult for their tactics to work, and they would be limited to juveniles and smaller ornithischians. Another issue is that the flora of the time may not be edible to Homo erectus. The vegetation portion of their diets was mostly fulfilled by angiosperms, and these had not evolved yet. However, the presence of thousands of eggs being laid by the dinosaurs would provide an incredible food source. Some recently extinct birds, like the moa, in large part went extinct due to humans collecting their eggs. However, Homo erectus would not be able to collect enough to seriously damage the populations, as there were already many egg stealers of the time, and the dinosaurs would be adapted to predation on their eggs. Homo erectus's survival skills, such as fire usage and tool making, were tailored to their own epic's challenges and resources. The materials and knowledge necessary for these survival strategies might not be available or applicable in the Jurassic environment. For instance, the flint or other stones used for tool making and fire starting might not be readily available, another being that lower oxygen levels would reduce the strength of fire and potentially even exclude its presence altogether. Furthermore, the potential predators and other dangers posed by the Jurassic era's wildlife would be daunting. The size, strength, and sheer numbers of predatory dinosaurs and other creatures could overwhelm Homo erectus, despite their intelligence and social organization. With more favorable oxygen levels, it is certainly possible these challenges would be overcome, although they are serious. If Homo erectus were to be transported back to the Mesozoic era, their best shot at survival would arguably be in the Cretaceous period. The oxygen levels in this period varied a bit, but for much of this period, the oxygen levels were far higher than modern levels. These elevated oxygen levels prevalent during this time firstly would not only meet, but exceed their cardiovascular needs, meaning they could be more active for longer periods of time, but would also amplify their mastery of fire. Fire was a powerful tool for Homo erectus, essential for their survival and dominance. In their time, this was used for warmth, cooking food, possibly tool making, and importantly, protection and intimidation. The enhanced oxygen would make fires burn hotter and more intensely, enhancing the hominins' abilities. Like the Jurassic period, the Cretaceous would offer seasonal abundance of eggs, a nutritious and accessible food source for Homo erectus. Also, by the late Cretaceous there were flowering plants, but even earlier by the mid-Cretaceous, plant diversity was higher than the Jurassic, increasing variety of possible food sources for Homo erectus. However, their habitual practice of hunting megafauna would have some significant challenges. The immense size of the Cretaceous megafauna could pose a serious threat, making hunting expeditions perilous. Triceratops was two to three times the size of a modern African elephant and was equipped with giant horns, a near impenetrable frill, and thick armoring scales. Many giant titanosaurs of the Cretaceous neared 100 tons, possibly even larger, far too large for Homo erectus to threaten. With an animal that large, their spears would feel more like mosquito bites than serious wounds. This means they would probably limit themselves to juvenile individuals of these species, as well as smaller species of dinosaur, but there would be plenty of these available. However, the presence of large theropods could pose a substantial risk as they could intimidate Homo erectus and usurp their hard-earned prey, forcing them off their kills. Despite these challenges, the combined advantages of high oxygen levels and protein-rich food abundance could afford Homo erectus a good chance at survival. If you have any thoughts, leave them in the comments below and have a good day everyone.